Good morning, everybody. Danny Wanda back from Deep South Homestead. I want to take just a moment this morning before we get busy. We got to pick all this this morning uh, and talk to you about amino prylids. There's products out there called Grazon that so many people are getting their crops ruined by. We, uh, it happened to us. This is a garden right here. We were feeding our goats years ago graze, uh, hay that we were buying in town. We got the bright idea. My barn was full of goat manure. So I took my bucket on my tractor out there, my front end loader, and we got like six big giant scoops of it and brought it and spread it all in here in the fall. And I was thinking, man, boy, we're going to have a garden this year like you won't believe. We got in here and planted our garden. It grew up and all wilted down, died. And we didn't, we couldn't figure it out. We thought it was a cold weather. We thought all kind of different things. We were running over these different scenarios. After we put everything in the high tone, one whole side of it over there was like two years later, we did that. This one was still struggling. We couldn't figure out what was wrong. We'd get tomato plants up here like this and they just wilt and die. And we had pots in front of our house that we'd put that soil in, just wilting and dying. Tomato plants get up big and beautiful. And we were like freaking out, not knowing what was going on. Until one day I just happened to bump into someone in the feed store and was telling them about what I was, what was going on. The guy told me, he said, well, it's your hay. You were feeding your goats. I said, what? He said, yeah. He said, we all spray our hay with Grazon. I said, what is Grazon? He said, it's a herbicide used to kill weeds in the field. He said, nobody want no weeds in their grass. Everybody sprays it on their hay fields. He said, it's an amino prylid. He said, it'll kill your plants. And I come home and started doing research into, I think it was DuPont, the company that created Grazon. And guys, I began to look into it. I got sick. I got totally sick because, I mean, I put bucketfuls of that stuff in this garden. And DuPont on their, I think, it, I hope I was saying it right, DuPont, was on their website was talking about Grazon. And they said they released themselves from being responsible for anything because they say the farmer that uses it has the responsibility to tell people that he's used Grazon in his hay that he feeds his animals. And I begin to dig deeper and realize that the beef, this grass-fed beef that everybody's so crazy about, it's got Grazon, Remedy, 2,4-D, all this kind of stuff in it. And I come home and I'm like, I don't know what we're going to do now. This was our garden spot, or one of our garden spots, plus my high tunnel. I done put it in my high tunnel. I had tomato plants up this tall, tomatoes that big around. They just started wilting and dying. Well, on... The company's website, they said that you could plant a monocot, which is grass or corn or something like that on it. And within three to four years, it would pull most of it out. But if you did nothing and did not plant any monocots, it could take up to 10 years. And at my age, I was like, this is my garden. You know, what am I going to do? So we, we started planting stuff in here, trying to pull it out pull it out, pull it out as much as we could. We even came in and added, we scooped a lot of that dirt off and I had these ponds dug and I brought that pond dirt and put it in here and tried to mix it in, you know, as much as I could, flat breaking it, turning it, you know. And this is the result, like, was it four years later, from the time we realized we had graze on, we have not been able to get a snap bean to grow in here at all. I mean, we tried and tried and tried and we just failed at it. And we just gave up here on green beans. We started growing them in the high tunnels. I had to dig a whole section of my high tunnel out and take the dirt and put it off behind my dam on my pond where I didn't want any weeds at and literally put it back there and let the grass grow and pull the monocot, I mean, pull the uh, grazon out of it and re-put new dirt in the high tunnel before I could get anything to grow. I had pots in there, and I didn't know which ones of them had it in it. I had to wait and plant in them, see which plants died, take those pots out, dump them, clean them, and put them back and put new soil in them. But guys, this is something that no, nobody's thinking about. 
People's like, you need to mulch your garden with a good straw or a good hay or a good this or a good that. I will not. Wanda and I now, for the last four years, have found a gentleman who we get our hay from now who does not spray his fields. And that has been one of the greatest blessings we have ever had. Now, at this point, are we using our cow manure? This year, in my barn over at the other property, I probably might start using it. But here, never. Because Grazon's already been in these barns in manure, and I don't know if I'll ever get it all cleaned out. So I won't do it here. But over there, yes, I will do it. So we're going to get out here this morning, and we're going to start picking these Cherokee yellow wax beans. The best bean we've ever come across as far as just peeing a good bean for grilling, canning, eating. Guys, it's fantastic. And these plants, look at them. They are beautiful. You're going to ask me what I fertilize them with. I use 82424. You do not want a high nitrogen fertilizer with any bean or pea. You want high phosphorus and high potassium and phosphorus mainly. But this is what you want, especially during blooming season on it. So let's get busy and see if we can't get some of these beans picked this morning. And I might add, while we go along, if we find any bad leaves, any diseased leaves like these here, where they've been laying on the soil, we take all that off while we're going through. Well guys, Miss Wanda was picking along on her side. <laughs> And she got right here and she said, Danny, something done bit the top out of these plants right here. I was like, what? We ain't had no problems with nothing out here. We were thinking insects or something like that. And then we moved over right here. And there it was the culprit. We got a little deer. And this is a little one. We haven't had any deer messing with anything on our property. So we haven't put out any bone sauce. We haven't done anything. And, well, I guess all that's fixing to change. It depends to go into armor mode. Fixing to go into armor mode, Ms. Wanda said. We're going to put up a white fence and bone sauce. We're we fixing to... For the sweet potatoes. Yeah. And, and luckily, nothing messed with the sweet potatoes because usually they just mow them off. Now, I don't even know if they've been in the sweet potatoes, but it doesn't look like anything has messed with anything. But you don't ever know. They could have just walked through here. Um, we just plowed these. And look at this. Right there. Did they find them? They walked down the road, Mama. Oh, no. Well, I'm trying to figure out where they come from. I'm backtracking. You know me. I'm a tracker. Nope, they ain't eat nothing. Now, that's a God thing there now. And right here, right down through here, right up through here. I think they still interested in these acorns because we got so many acorns still on the ground from last year. Yep, these tracks are right here. They had to have come from down this away. So. They probably the jump. The bone sauce is going out. The ribbons is going out. We go into hyper mode here. So, yep. Yep, yep, yep. Guys, let me take you up here and show you. Uh, we've picked three rows 
so far. Now this is not our big picking. Our big picking will probably come later next week. This is just our, well we had a little picking the other day, went through and picked out the old plants, but um, we've got this many so far, um, which is about uh, three gallons, I guess, the size of those pots. And Ms. Wanda still got a whole row to go here. I'm fixing to jump in there and help her. And we're going to get these things picked out and we fix and go into full stealth armor mode because we ain't about to let these things go here now. And might want to add, guys, a lot of people are using a lot of hay and stuff like that. Please, please be careful where you get your hay from. Even if you know the people, question them. Because if you poison your soil, I don't know if we have enough time left to be able to work it out and get your garden going as, as short of food supplies as we're fixing to start having and are having and the price of food. Now, that may not be that there's not any food. It might be the price of the food is what's going to be the biggest issue. If food was to triple right now, people would be in trouble. And that's why it's so important. And believe it or not, and I, I mean, everybody says, oh, you're a conspiracy theorist. No, there is an agenda out there to promote organic gardening and to get people to buy in things that they ought not buy and put into their soil that's contaminating their soil, thinking that they're doing good because you're listening to one who made that mistake. So I'm telling you, these stuff you buy from stores, if any, if any of them says anything about having cow manure in it, I would steer from it. Now, I know a lot of people use it out there, and I've used it in some, sparsely and not had any bad results, but I've used it and had bad results. I mean, I've bought some black cow and had all my plants die, you know, and have to empty the dirt out of the pot, put new soil in there, and regrow stuff, and it grows fine. So anything that, that has cow manure in it at all, or horse manure, goat manure, sheep manure, anything like that, be careful. Please be careful. Do not contaminate your soil. Now, there's a lot of YouTube channels out there that has a lot to say about this because it's happened to them. Uh, I guess David the Good, friend of ours, uh, probably had the first videos out there that i knew about about grazon we were right behind him and then i think uh roots and refuge and uh, uh billy and michelle up at perma pastures they've had it happen to them i mean guys it's happening to everybody that's trying to garden the right way there's an agenda to stop us by contaminating our fertilizers so please be careful about what you use. Thank you guys from Deep South Homestead. Still track. Well guys, we just ran out our electric fencing here. We don't have it charged or anything like that. We taken and we had a bunch of old uh row cover and we tore strips off of it and we hung it all around it everywhere because that stuff blows in the wind constantly even the slightest breeze will move it and what we're going to do we put these two tomato cages up here we got several more of them we may stick along here because this is the direction they're coming from and deer are creatures of habit you know they they tend to do the same thing over and over and over and if they're we put these here and we notice Something in some other direction will make some kind of alternate changes there. But the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get the bone sauce. It's over at Pecan Grove. we got to go get it. Bring it over here. And we're going to put some bone sauce out around here uh, on those flags. And that way you can take it off and you don't get it on your wire. You don't get it on your plants and stuff yeah. like that. We learned a hard lesson over at uh, Pecan Grove. We covered up one of our columnar apple trees with bone sauce and it's not doing too good. So we're going to go back and clean it off. Um, I think we put too much on the tree is what happened. He's saying one to put too much on the tree. Well, 
Miss Wanda put too much on the tree, okay? I'll just go ahead and say it. Uh, so we're not putting it on trees anymore. Well, we're not putting that much of it on trees. She slathered it from top to bottom, up and down the trees, you know? And uh, that tree puts on apples at each stage. Each spur coming up the tree is a columnar. It puts apples on all the way up, and it's, and it's messed it up this year. So lesson learned. Uh, we're going to get some ribbon stuff and tie on this, uh, some pieces of cloth or something other. Uh, and we're going to put the uh, bone sauce on these and probably several more around the patch here. And hopefully that will spare us from anything visiting this garden again till we at least get ma a majority of it harvested because that is the, uh, that's, our, that's our goal anyway. Now we have a sweet potato patch on the back hill back here. Has no protection around it. We have it all up here. So we got to go back there and put some bone sauce out around it. Some tomato cages with some ribbon stuff on it to put the bone sauce on and try to keep the deer out of the sweet potato patch back there.